What's going on guys out in Revolution Land? Uh, so I'm gonna start my conversation today with our traditional international greeting. Forgive me if I forget yours, but uh, let's start with um, hello, bonjour, ciao ragazzi, ni hao, shalom, salam alaikum habibi. Uh, let's also do aloha and let's also do wagwan. Right, so I hope everyone's well. Uh, today I wanna to talk a little bit about a watch that I've been wearing for the last couple of days. And I have to say, I freaking love this thing. Um, and it is the Piaget Polo Skeleton, right? This timepiece right here, which Piaget was kind enough to lend to me, you know, and when I received it, I didn't, I wasn't sure what I was gonna think, um, to be honest with you. But I have to say, uh, now, after about a week, I'm actually considering buying one of these. I wanted to talk a little bit about integrated bracelet sport chic watches. Um, as you guys all know, this has become like the coolest category of watch for today. Why is that? Well, I think part of it is because they're incredibly adaptable, right? You've got a watch on an integrated bracelet, you can jump into the pool, you can do some sports on it, you can ride your bicycle or your motorcycle, um, and then you can show up to like an elegant dinner, and you're still perfectly stylish looking. Um, so let's talk about the entrenched players in this field first. So uh, I couldn't talk about the integrated bracelet sports watch if I didn't talk about the AP Royal Oak and I actually happen to have one of those right here it's my personal watch of 5402 in yellow gold which dates to 1978 and of course this watch was launched in 1972 then the other integrated bracelet uh, entrenched player uh, is of course the Patek Philippe Nautilus and uh, this is my personal 3700 1A uh, the modern version of this is of course the 5711 the now discontinued 5711 which has caused uh, the, the secondary prices of that watch to shoot up stratospherically so if you're looking for one of those I'm sorry guys, but you're gonna have to spend a ton of money, right? Now the other watch that of course I love and that we've been talking a lot about is the Bulgari Octo Finissima. And this is an amazing watch, launched in 2014. And again, like I've always said, I love this watch because they can only achieve a watch of this thinness, 5.15 mm uh, for the manual wine version. Uh, if they had in-house manufacturing for dials, cases, bracelets, and movements, because think about it from the perspective of this, right? So the dial on this watch is 0.2 mm thick for the titanium dial. That's actually thinner than most indexes, right? Uh, and when you do have applied indexes on these watches, they're actually galvanically grown and stuck onto the dial. So I love that watch. And in 2014, when I saw it, I was like, this is incredible. It's gonna be a new icon. And I kind of think that it is today. Like every cool guy I know has at least one Octo Finissima, right? Um, so let's talk about the Piaget Polo. One of the things that like, I thought was incredible about this watch is as soon as you put it on your wrist, it just feels great. And it comes down to the fact that it's 6.5 mm in thickness, right? So just as a comparison, uh, this watch, which is the 5402 or the Royal Oak is 7 mm in thickness. Uh, and uh, I believe the modern version of that watch, the 15202 is slightly thicker because it's got a sapphire case back. Uh, the Nautilus is 7.6 mm in thickness. And I believe the 5711 is like 8.2 something like that, you know? Uh, and then the Bulgari Octo Finissimo is a thin watch, so that's 5.15. But at 6.5, this is an incredibly elegant watch, right? The other thing I love about it as well, and this is the reason why they can make it so thin, is because this watch is housing the Caliber 1200S, uh, which is Piaget's in-house micro-rotor skeletonized uh, movement, which is absolutely fantastic. So you guys probably know that Piaget has this incredible tradition in ultra-thin movements dating back to 1957 with the 9P, which was a manual wind movement that was 2mm. And then in 1960, they followed up with an automatic movement with a micro rotor, just like this watch, uh, which was uh, the 12P, and that was 2.3mm. But I have to say, so this movement is 2.4 mm. Um, I think probably part of that is that it's fully skeletonized and as a result, the bridges need to be made a little bit thicker in order to retain everything with total stability. But the movement is so cool looking, right? And I think the thing that's really interesting is that it's the first time the 1200S has been available in a steel watch. This movement was usually found in an Altiplano with like a white gold case or a rose gold case. And that was like in Singapore dollars, like an $88,000 watch. Like I think it's about 60, 65,000 US dollars. The cool thing is now they've taken that movement and I love the sort of like the kind of lateral thinking of Piaget to be like you know what we've got this amazing movement it's always been in a dress watch let's put it in our sports watch and in so doing completely change the dimensions of our sports watch the polo and it certainly has right the other thing I love about this watch is the dial itself which is basically the skeletonized plate of the watch uh, the dial itself is an expression of Piaget's incredible watchmaking acumen, right? You have the micro rotor at nine o'clock, which is super efficient. It just spins like, you know, really, really quickly when you move around slightly. You've got the balance wheel mounted on a beautiful full skeletonized bridge at six o'clock. And then at kind of like 12, I want to say 12.05, you've got the barrel. And what's great is as you wind the watch, 
you can actually see the mainspring coils get closer to the center. So it actually, you know what the power reserve of the watch is. But when you put it on the wrist, like this case, which has been completely reconfigured, uh, and this bracelet, which is also a perfect complement to it, the first thing that you realize is that Piaget's like, finish is freaking sick. Right? Like you look at that movement and you look at the contrast and beveling uh, with the brushing on the, on, on the, on the bridges, uh, with the, the beautiful high polish of the hands and of the indexes and of all the angles, and you just feel something that, you know, you just really feel that it's a watch that's exuding incredible quality. So what's my take on this watch? Like I said, like I've been wearing it for a while and I'm actually having a tough time taking it off. Now, is it going to be a replacement for either a Nautilus or a Royal Oak? The quick answer to that is no. If you want an AP and you want a Royal Oak, then go get yourself an AP and a Royal Oak, which is probably not gonna be that easy right now because there's a waiting list for all these watches. As far as Nautiluses are concerned, I think we all know what the story for those watches are. So again, it's one of my favorite watches, but it's not necessarily an easy watch to get. The Octo Finissimo, yeah, you know, you can get it. I think that they're um, uh, a little bit delayed because uh, relative to demand uh, for some of the models, but it's a great watch and you know, it's something that you can, you can access. Now, that having been said, what I really like about this watch is how modern it is, right? And it feels like something that's super techy, especially in the titanium that's been matte blasted. Uh, and, you know, and that was the objective of that watch. But the Piaget Polo skeleton kind of is both modern and kind of like retro in its in, in, at the same time, right? When I say retro, of course, it's like this showcase of you know mechanical watchmaking, and and with beautiful sort of like finish. And at the same time, you've got a really modern interpretation of skeletonization. And the overall effect of the watch is it's something that is you know singular and unique and 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 belongs purely to the iconography of Piaget. So my point is if you have already one of these watches and you're thinking about like what else could I get for an integrated bracelet watch I would say go down to Piaget and try this watch on because you may find it as cool as I do uh, and you much like myself may consider purchasing one so that's it guys um, Piaget Polo uh, skeleton I have to say it's a killer watch um, sometimes people ask like uh, you know how do you retain your journalistic integrity uh, if you are you know have a commercial relationship with brands or someone like that I have to say I wasn't paid to make this video I genuinely wanted to do it because that's how dope I find the watch so will they pay me in the future I don't know I'm not gonna complain if they do but in the meantime I just want you guys to know that this was not motivated by any commercial relationship but purely because I think it's awesome all right thanks very much guys uh, and I'm gonna end with Aloha which apparently is both hello and goodbye so Aloha Thank you.